Hello everyone, I am Krishna and let us continue learning the product manufacturing capabilities of SAP Business by Design. In this unit, we will discuss two key concepts which will enable the organization in better fulfilling their business and customer specific requirements. The first one is batch management using identified stocks. So, what is a batch? Batch primarily refers to grouping of few units of inventory based on common characteristics of the units. Materials that require such precise identification, for example, in the industries of pharmaceutical and automotives are identified and managed in stock not only per material number but also per batch number. The other commonly used term for batch is lot number. Once the material is marked as batch managed, then it is mandatory to maintain the batch information while building inventory in the system for that product. In business by design, batch management is enabled using the object identified stock. The next one is product specification. In the last unit, we have discussed a way to define the variant for the product using product specification. In this unit, let us understand the process flow using product specification in order to build and issue the goods as per the product specification. Now, let us quickly discuss on how to enable these features for a material. At a material master level, identified stock type is a field which not only allows the user to define the material as batch managed, but also allows the user in defining if product specification is enabled for that material. It can be primarily set as batch, lot, optional specified stock and mandatory specified stock. It can as well be left as blank. If the type is batch or lot, then the material is batch managed, but the product specification is not enabled in the process. Similarly, if the type is optional specified stock, then it is not batch managed, but the product specification is enabled. So, each and every identified stock has a corresponding impact on the batch management and the product specification enablement. Depending upon the business need, one needs to select the identified stock type. For example, if I have a product one, okay, which is batch managed and is required to build to stock always, then user should select the identified stock as batch or lot. In case, if I have a product which is batch managed but the business requirement is to build to stock as well as build to order, then I should select my stock type as mandatory specified stock. If I have the product as product 4 which is not batch managed but has the business requirement to build to order and also to build to order as well as build to stock, then I have to select my identified stock type as optional specified stock. So, based on the matrix whatever you are seeing on the slide, depending upon the combination of business requirements, user needs to select the right identified stock type. Now, once I create an identified stock, in other words, once I have a batch, the batch might or might not have a stock associated with it. Once the stock is associated with identified stock, it can be of the stock can be unrestricted, restricted or inspection. At the same time, the batch itself can have different status. The batch can be active, the batch may be blocked for some reasons or it might become obsolete after expiry. The status will have an eventual impact on the inventory as well. For example, if I have a batch which is active and have a stock unrestricted which is associated with it. If I make the batch from active to obsolete, the corresponding stock will automatically move from unrestricted to restricted. So, the status on the I stock will eventually have a update on the inventory as well. Now, coming to the next slide, once a product is identified as batch managed, it is mandatory to enter the batch number across all processes of the inventory management. For example, the processes like inbound, outbound, production, etc. There are three more important characteristics of the batch management. 
batch specific uim conversions at times it is required to maintain the uim conversion at batch level this is a very common requirement in oil and gas industry where the conversion between mass and volume units vary from batch to batch also at a batch level user can maintain the expiry date to ensure that the batch which is beyond the expiration date is not used by system in execution process also user can maintain the minimum shelf life for a material at a site level depending upon their supply chain requirement we also have an automated run which is called as identified stock maintenance run which can be scheduled regularly which will ensure that the stocks which are beyond the expiry date or having the life less than the minimum shelf life the stock will be set to restricted upon execution of this run having said having discussed about the batch management let's quickly discuss about product specification we already know that that we can use product specification id and properties to record the special requirements your customer needs the product specification id and properties follow the product through the process of external procurement or internal production this enables you to order manufacture pick and ship products with specific requirements to your customer if we take the example of order to cash then the prs can be maintained or the product specification can be maintained right from the sales code process which will be carry forwarded to sales order to delivery process and finally till the point of outbound deliveries and customer invoices user can also create product specification specific production master data elements namely production bill of material and production model now when a stock so we got a specific requirement called product specification when a stock is being built specifically to your product specification then such stock can be linked to product specification only via identified stock at an identified stock level user can maintain the product specification having said that a product specification can be assigned to multiple identified stocks but for a particular identified stock only one product specification can be assigned and most importantly an identified stock which is assigned a product specification can only be consumed against the requirement with the same product specification when i say requirement the requirement like customer orders etc now having understood the batch management using identified stocks and product specification having a stock linkage via identified stock let's execute a process in the system to issue these kind of batch managed stock as well as pr specific stock in the system so let's take a quick example before we take the example let me quickly explain showcase the master data setting that i was mentioning let us pick let us take a product called kr uh, product which i am using here for our demo purpose this product has been selected as has the identified stock has been selected with the identified stock type as mandatory specified stock which practically means that the it is enabled as batch and the product specification is also enabled the next thing let me go to the stock overview to quickly check the corresponding stock situation for this product so i am going to the product and i see in the system there are primarily two batches batch number 3 batch number 4 and there is an inventory or stock of 1000 units for batch 3 and 500 units for batch 4 and i also have the information of product specification which tells me that this 1000 units are very specific to product specification and these 500 units are independent of any product specification if you remember this is the prs which we created in the earlier unit so we have already have the stock situation here let's keep the screen open and let's go and try to create an order i am trying to create a sales order where 
my customer is requesting 2000 units 2000 units of this particular product one with specification one without specification i am just using one of the customer master available in the system okay and then i would like to create uh, two line items one with with prs one without prs okay and i am creating my product and the other as well and i would like to give the list price here and then i would like to give the prs here that is test underscore prs and i would say i would need a total of 2000 units and i also create another line where the customer is asking for a product without any prs he is asking for a product without any specific uh, conditions coming with the prs he also wants 2000 units okay now at this point if you see for the item without prs i got the confirmation only for 500 units that's because without prs i have a stock of only 500 units whereas for the request of 2000 units i got the confirmation of 1000 that's because with prs i have a stock of 1000 units so the most important point to understand here is that at the time of ordering itself system will ensure if the requirement is coming with the prs then i would only look the stock which is associated with the prs if you really see for this product there is a total inventory of 1500 but none of the requirements got the confirmation for 1500 because in this 1500 the system will clearly differentiate 1000 is with prs test underscore uh, prs and the other one is without product specification so i use product specification and prs a bit interchangeably uh, it's more like a short name and the full name of the document so we have this sales order getting created and it has the confirmation uh, provided accordingly as per the stock situation now let's execute to the next level we will release it and then we will start executing this particular sales order the execution of the outbound process you have already learnt in the week 2 so i will not dwell too much into the details of it and i will directly execute it so i will just go and release my customer demand and once i release the customer demand i will then uh, go to the issue process okay i am just releasing the customer demand once i release the customer demand i will then navigate to the delivery process i am just trying to do the issue process and we will clearly understand that system will ensure that the line with the prs requirement will pick up the stock of prs for example this is the line and it is picking up if i want to propose quantities system picks up the stock 3 for the line item with the prs and we understand from the stock overview that stock 3 is the one which is associated with the prs and we can also see the association in the batch master okay in the batch master we can see very clearly identified stock is associated with the prs so with that we will execute this and once i issue the goods system will reduce the inventory accordingly and i should also see that the stock got executed from the system completely with no stock lying around with that let's come back to the slides that's the end of demo and uh, with that not only the end of demo we also come to the end of unit 6 so to quickly summarize in this we have primarily learned the batch management functionality and also how the prs will be used in the end to end process with that we complete week 3 hope you enjoyed the sessions goodbye